There's been a lot of conversation lately about nuclear energy being one of the solutions to climate change. When this comes up, it usually is in terms of small modular nuclear reactors or SMRs. So in this video, I'd like to go over some of the key facts about SMRs and look at one project in particular to separate the reality from the hype. Hello everyone, I'm John Vensel, a researcher focused on economic issues around energy and water. So let's get to it. Nuclear energy has been in the news recently as a way to generate clean and sustainable electricity to mitigate climate change. Proponents see this as a way to decarbonize electric generation, that is, a way to create electricity without emitting CO2. Now, we all know that nuclear reactors are expensive to build and take a long time to construct, on average around seven years, and that's after the site has been approved. Finding and approving a site in the U.S. can take decades. Proponents counter that nuclear reactors require less land than other sources. For example, the U.S. Office of Nuclear Energy estimates one square mile of land for a nuclear power plant versus 75 times more for the equivalent generation with solar and 360 times more for equivalent wind. Now, it is true that nuclear reactors do not emit carbon dioxide directly, but they do produce another type of pollution due to the nature of their operations and that, of course, is radioactive waste. This waste is both in terms of spent nuclear fuel and high-level waste. Spent fuel is the used uranium, and high-level waste includes all the reactor materials that become radioactive as a result of reactor operations. For example, pipes, cooling water, control rods, and any other materials that the atoms come into contact with. So what do we do with this waste? Well. The U.S. Department of Energy is charged with managing waste in a geologic repository, but finding a suitable location has been stalled since about 2010. Currently, radioactive power plant waste is stored in shielded concrete casks on site with the reactors. This is true for both active and decommissioned reactors. Military grade waste is stored underground at a site in New Mexico. The U.S. has been trying to settle on a commercial storage facility since 1987 but it's been controversial to say the least. So why does this matter? To address the problems of high construction costs, reduce the time to build, and reduce the waste, designers have come up with small modular reactors to solve these problems. So what are small modular reactors? Well, SMRs generate electricity at a smaller scale than traditional reactors. A conventional single reactor produces around 1,000 megawatts. Plants with several reactors can generate much more than that. For example, the largest plant in the world is in Japan and produces nearly 8,000 megawatts. 7,965 megawatts, I believe, to be precise. Um, a small modular reactor produces from 10 megawatts up to around 300 megawatts. Now, the details get a bit messy in the calculation, but just for context, let's say one megawatt of electricity can power 750 home capacity smrs can't address benefits typically touted for larger reactors like economies of scale currently though proponents of smrs tout the smaller size as a benefit citing lower total costs and less required land similar to manufactured homes these small modular reactors are built in sections in a factory transported to a site and then assembled at the site this purportedly reduces construction time and costs. Proponents claim that the standardization improves quality control and also standardizes operations and maintenance tasks, ostensibly reducing maintenance costs. Since these units are relatively small, <clears throat> they can be sited and built in locations not suitable for traditional plants. In fact, some designs propose microreactors that produce from one to 50 megawatts and can be transported using a tractor trailer. Now, weighing the pros and cons of having portable nuclear reactors is for another video. And this brings us to the question, are SMRs the solution they are hyped up to be? To date, few SMRs have been built, and detractors say the time may have passed for SMRs to be as viable as advertised. Now, a current example in the U.S. is a 77 megawatt SMR being built by the company NewScale for Utah Associated Municipal Power Systems. This is a power wholesaler. It's a member agency across six 
Western States. The agency is planning a six unit plant for a total capacity of 462 megawatts. At 750 homes per megawatt, the final plant should be able to power about 347,000 homes. However, a 2022 report by the Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis, I'll call it the Institute, examined the new scale project <clears throat> and found that, certainly in this case, the SMR approach doesn't seem to mitigate any of the issues associated with larger reactors. For example, the timeline. In 2000, the original plan was to have the first reactor online by 2016. Revised estimates by the company now put that in 2029. So the first sale of electricity will not happen until about 2030 after all the testing is complete. Utilization, another term for this is capacity factor. New scale claims their untested design will operate at 95% of capacity. Capacity in this context is the amount of power generated over a given period, say one year, compared to its theoretical output over that time, operating at full power, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is theoretically possible, but according to the Institute, no existing unit has ever reached a 95% capacity factor. The highest capacity factor reached for the 93 reactors in the US is 85%. The median is 67%. This is important because the level of operating efficiency directly affects the cost of generated electricity. In other words, fixed costs are spread over fewer outputs, causing the cost of each output to be higher. Take a look at this chart for existing and proposed SMRs. The lowest cost on this chart is nearly $71 per megawatt hour for what's labeled as an nth design reactor. This means that Pacific Corp, the owner, has moved up the learning curve after building a few other reactors. The new scale design is considered a first of its kind design, so there is no track record. Just a note, levelized cost in this chart just means the average net present value of costs over a unit's lifetime. Okay, now the dollar per megawatt hour cost estimate of $58 is predicated on generating energy 95% of the time. If actual efficiency is around 85%, the Institute estimates the cost per megawatt hour goes up to $64. At 67%, again the median for existing plants, the cost is closer to $80. By contrast, according to Bloomberg, utility scale onshore wind was at $45 per megawatt hour in 2022, and solar was at about $46 per megawatt hour. These are up a bit from 2021 due to inflation and supply chains, but overall the trend for these technologies is down. Now you're asking, so what? Well, the takeaway is that the promise of nuclear at a as a cost-effective climate-saving solution via small modular reactors may be a bit of a pipe dream at least through this decade. And remember that in this video, we haven't even discussed some of the other aspects of the New Scale project that could impose a financial burden. This includes the effects of contracting. The parties on the hook to pay for this plant are the municipal purchasers, not the developers. The load management plan for this plant this is where the reactor generation level, its electric supply, is throttled up and down to match electric demand, causing more wear and tear and cost on the unit. And finally, waste. A study by the National Academy of Science estimates SMRs may produce from five and a half to 35 times more energy equivalent waste than traditional reactors. In addition, this waste will be more costly to process and store due to its radiochemical differences from traditional reactor waste. So now what? Well, the composition of the grid is expected to change dramatically over the next 10 years. This means more solar, more wind, more battery storage, and better ways to integrate these into the grid. Simultaneously, the cost associated with these new techs continues to decrease. The example of the New Scale project demonstrates how these new small reactor plants may not be the solution they are touted to be for several reasons, with the main ones being performance, cost, and waste. Who knows? Maybe we decide the benefits of nuclear outweigh the costs, especially if we are replacing coal-fired generation. But if we really want to change the composition of our energy supply cycle, we need to make some seemingly simple choices that apparently are politically and economically hard. This includes 
How we generate energy from wind, water, the sun, and yes, uranium atoms. If you learned something new today, have any questions, you just want to see more videos like this, let me know. Leave a comment, click the like button, and subscribe. Links for all the sources are in the description below. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you again.